I'm really honored to be here this morning to share with you something about demographic changes on the continent of Africa and tie it up to the youth employment challenges that the continent is facing. Our world is expected to undergo unprecedented demographic shifts. And it's going to happen in ways that African affairs will no longer be the preserve for Africans alone, but it will increasingly become a global affair. Global population is expected to reach about nearly 10 billion people. Africa's population will double by the mid-century and will quadruple by the end of the 21st century. And this is happening whilst population growth in other parts of the world slows down, which means that Africa's share of global population is going to increase from about 16% now to about 22% by mid-century. Now, as Africa increasingly accounts for a greater share of the global population, Africa's impact on the global economy and its food systems will amplify. Now, the continent of Africa is also young. About 62% of the population is below the age of 25. And by 2050, it's going to be home to one in four global youth. So it is really fair to say that the impact that Africa is going to have on the world and the growth that is going to happen on the continent is largely going to be determined by the values, the competencies, and the quality of the trainings that these young people are going to have. We are already seeing a lot of um, effects from this population growth on labor, on land, and also on the food markets. And I'm just going to highlight um, a few. The first one is the continent now faces a huge employment challenge. The estimates indicate that the gap between the number of Africans, young Africans that enter the labor force each year, and available wage jobs in the former sector widens by about 8 million each year, which means that the number of young people entering the labor force today who will never in their lifetime secure wage employment in the former sector at this current trajectory. There is also the issue of rising land scarcity. There is a lot of talk about land abundance on the continent. But if you break it down, the evidence suggests that about 90% of available arable land is concentrated in just nine countries. A number of them are politically fragile, which means that most African countries, the 45, are either land constrained or are approaching the extent of their land. And even in those areas where land is available, rural youth especially are now have to wait longer to be able to inherit land because of rising life expectancy of their parents. And that is fueling out migration from rural areas and also into, into the um, urban centers and some international migration. <laughs> and then on, on the farm, we are also seeing that Farmers are now being driven by the land pressure to, to, uh, to, uh, to continue on cultivating the air crop, in most cases without sufficient soil, fer uh, soil fertility management, which is leading to soil degradation. And the, a report in 2014 by the Montpellier panel estimated about 65% of arable land on the continent is already degraded. Then there's also rising demand for food, which has been fueled by the combined factors of population growth, urbanization, and rising incomes. Now, despite this growing demand, Africa's agriculture has not evolved to be able to meet this. 
So we are also seeing a rising dependence on food imports, which rose about 13 folds just between 2001 and 2014. Now, there is a lot of opportunities associated with this, although we might also see it as a challenge. I believe that just the sheer numbers of these young people, coupled with the fact that because of rising incomes, consumer spending, consumer and business spending on the continent is projected to reach about $6.7 trillion by 2030. That is a huge market for global businesses if we are able to harness that. But how do we harness this opportunity? I believe these young people will need opportunities to be able to um, get the skill set that is befitting of the 21st century. They are also going to need opportunities to apply those skill sets in gainful employment. And that leads me to two main pillars where investment is needed. The first one is going to be broad-based productivity, uh, agricultural productivity growth. And what that is going to do is going to raise incomes of those that are in agriculture. It will increase the competitiveness and the resilience of local food production systems to imports. And then lastly, and more importantly, it's going to generate the growth multipliers that will create new jobs in the overall economy. Our own analysis indicates that Agricultural productivity has been a key driver of the recent economic transformation that we've seen on the continent. So countries like Ethiopia, Rwanda, that invested heavily to improve agricultural productivity has also seen the largest exit of labor out of agriculture and also the largest gains in labor productivity in the oil farm sector, which is very similar to what the Green Revolution did in Asia. With a large number of Africans still engaged in the agricultural sector, agriculture is going to play a key role in the economic transformation on the continent. Now, promoting broad-based productivity growth is, uh, will require strategic investment in some key areas. And some of them is going to be uh, investment in R&D and robust extension systems that would ensure that those end users, the farmers and those uh, um, uh, that need the technology are able to have access to those productivity enhancing technologies. And also ensure efficient use of existing technologies. They're also going to require investment in infrastructure and the roads, electricity, irrigation systems that will reduce the cost of doing business on the continent, facilitate access to market and enhance competitiveness but also strengthen the linkages between rural and the urban centers. While also strengthening those linkages between the farm and the off-farm sector through value addition, like investment in agro-based processes. Now, the second pillar for this transformation is going to be an investment in human capital. And that investment in human capital will help upgrade the skills of the labor force, but also give them the skill set that allows them to identify opportunities and amply take advantage of those opportunities that are available to them. And then the second important thing that you do is, is going to help accelerate the pace of this, of this demographic transition in the region. Preparation for human capital development we'll need to start a little bit early, and we may have to think about it from a life cycle approach. And it's going to it's, it's need to start as early as possible. So starting first with investment in nutrition and health, especially in the first 1,000 days of a child's life where they are most vulnerable to diseases like stunting, which impairs their ability to learn. Stunting and the cumulative effect of Malnutrition alone is believed to cause the continent about 11% of its gross national product. So we need to ad address that. It's also going to require long-term and intensive investment in education at all levels, especially for young girls. 
to help grant them, they equip them with the skill set that they need to effectively participate in the labor force, but also empower them to take more control over their fertility uh, decisions. Now, President Roosevelt said something. Uh, he said, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. I personally believe that the African youth is ripe for that investment that will build them for the future. And when I look at myself and the millions of young Africans out there, the difference between us is opportunity. And I believe that with proactive investment and pragmatic strategies, we will be able to harness the innovativeness, the entrepreneurial spirit that I see across the continent and partner with them to address global problems. But I also want to add that we need not just invest in them or invest for them, but we also need to invest with them. No one knows the, no one knows the young people's problems more than they do. And we can't afford to have the solutions. We need to partner with them, recognize them as active participants, and give them the resources, the space, and the skill set to actively participate in bringing about solutions that are of concern to them. 